Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gold Money Asian Rapid Knockout. It's Wesley So versus Magnus Carlsen. This is round two and here we have one of those games that's extremely simple uh, if you are 2800. If you're not, then chances are it's going to be a, a little bit complicated. But not for these gentlemen. As you'll see, they make it look so uh, so simple. It's, it's just insane. Uh, so Wesley with the white pieces now has to bounce back. Magnus won the first game and now Wesley needs a win to get back into the match. He opens with E4. Uh, we have e5 by Magnus, knight f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to c4. We have bishop to c5, and Wesley does not go for the strongest move here. Rather, he plays c3, goes for the main line of the Joko Piano. Uh, knight to f6, we have d3 and d6. So this is all uh, very, very standard stuff. We have castles uh, and h6 now. We have rook to e1, castles by Magnus, and knight b to d2. All standard uh, Joko Pianissimo uh, ideas. We have a6, and now knight to f1. Now the bishop can come to e3, counter this bishop, and if black trades, then you can even bring a knight to e3. So, bishop back to a7, uh, now you don't want it to get in the line of fire when white starts pushing b4, d4, uh, and now white starts with a4. And here, there is one game uh, Alexander Grishuk played against uh, Wen, Wen Yang in 2019 that he was able to win. Uh, where Yang played knight to e7, but here we have rook to e8 by Magnus, and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Wesley continues against this new idea. Uh, we have h3, makes sense, you want to uh, prevent this bishop from being developed uh, so deep into the position. Now this is covered, this is covered, but the bishop to e6 can be played, and this is what Wes uh, what Magnus plays. So bishop to e6, uh, Wesley trades here, we have captress, captress, and only now b4 by Wesley. We have queen to d7, now ready to bring the other rook into the game, and now queen to c uh, c2, preparing bishop to e3, and then everything will be nicely developed. But Magnus now says, alright, since um, you haven't prevented me in any way from pushing d5 uh, that's exactly what i'm gonna do so magnus pushes d5 uh, and bishop to e3 now uh, countering uh, uh, Carlson's uh, dark square bishop on, on a7. We have bishop captures on e3, knight captures, and now knight to e7. Uh, the knight is now coming to g6. From there, it can come to f4, and the knight on f4 will be will be a monster, controlling a lot of these squares. So c4 by Wesley, and Magnus advances the pawn to d4. Here, of course, uh, you, you can't allow any captures, so you either capture or push d4. Uh, it d does make sense to push d4. So d4, we have knight to f5. And now uh, you don't want to capture here. If you capture, then yes, you've doubled white spawns, but now the rook is under attack and you're going to lose this pawn. It's attacked twice. So instead, after knight to f5, we have a5 uh, by black, of course, uh, challenging the b4 pawn, and Wesley advances it to b5. So he keeps the position closed, and Magnus says, all right, do you want to uh, keep the uh, position on the queen side and the center closed completely? So now if you don't capture our Poisson, uh, at some point I'm going to play b6, and that's it. Uh, we're no longer playing on the queen side, or on the uh, or in the center of the board where the, the entire game will be shifted over to the king's side. So Wesley goes knight 3 to h4, now prepares to bring the queen into the game. Uh, and knight to g6 by Magnus. Uh, and again, uh, it's a similar idea to what Wesley wanted to do here. He wants to... Um, uh, Magnus would like to double his g pawn to kick away this knight from f5, but Wesley not interested in that. He plays g3. Uh, at some point, he wants to trade. He wants to bring the rook to f1 and then finally execute this f4 to, to bust open the position here. Maybe double rooks on the f file and have some sort of an attack against the black king. So knight to e8 by Magnus and now king to h2. Uh, we have knight to d6 now uh, attacking this knight from here, uh, and the queen to e2. The queen now also ready to jump into the game. Uh, Magnus trades a pair of knights, knight captures, knight captures, and now queen to e7. Uh, Wesley goes back with the knight, knight f5, attacking the queen and the knight here. So queen to f6, still not uh, eager to capture here on f5. We have knight captures on d6, rook captures, and only now rook to f1. Now threatening f4, and then he's gonna try and do some damage here. And uh, uh, even though g5 looks like a very nice idea, uh, it's simply, uh, it, it's not enough. f4 still will give white a much better position. For example, captures, captures, and captures. Yes, you win a pawn, but only temporarily, just queen g4 check you're gonna win the pawn back and you're gonna uh, retain a better position so after rook to f1 we have rook to e8 uh, by magnus and now comes uh, a a f4 as planned uh, we have queen back to d8 and now comes queen to h5 so honing in on that uh, f7 square so f6 by magnus and now h4 
So what do you play here? Magnus goes queen to d7. Now comes rook to f2. You want to bring the other rook into the, the attack as well. We have queen to f7 offering a queen trade. Queen back to f3 by Wesley. We have e captures on f4, g captures and f5 now by Magnus. But now Wesley just continues with e5. And the b pawn uh, is being pressured but the queen defends it. So it's not a problem. We have rook to g6 and now comes rook to g1. Offering a rook trade and here Magnus just trades. Captures, captures. And if you look at this position the queen side completely blocked. The center completely blocked. There's only the g file to be used for attack. Uh, but it doesn't seem that you, you will be able to do something with this. However... Uh, these are uh, very very strong players and if there is a chance it, it will be done. So here we have b6 by Magnus and now comes rook to g2. Magnus says not a problem just king h7. Uh, we have h5 now. Now the rook can come over at, at the g6. So here we have rook to e6 by Magnus uh, and uh, there's really no way for white to infiltrate. You, you can play something like uh, queen to a8 but you, you can always just kick the queen away by shifting the rook. It's not a problem. So here king to f2 by Wesley and now there's only one good move for Magnus here but it's, uh, it's an ugly move you don't want to play so I'm just going to show it to you. Here in order to uh, survive this position and yes this position requires surviving uh, Magnus has to play g5 and now the point is uh, after a move like f captures on g5 and h captures on g5 and the rook captures on g5 yes you've given up a pawn and it seems like you you've, you've um, uh, you know uh, ruined your position a little bit uh, there's rook captures on e5 now defends the pawn and what do you do here white will attack with h6 to threaten uh, rook captures uh, uh, rook to g7 check to win the queen and of course if king captures uh, then you will have uh, you know a winning game just queen f4 and now you have all these uh, discoveries and if you move the king then queen h4 check queen blocks and queen captures will be checkmate uh, so uh, instead after h6 you have to find this incredible king to h8 and uh, had magnus found all of these ideas then yes uh, uh, you can still maybe uh, try and play this um, uh, you know to to, to, to a draw uh, but he didn't after king to f2 Magnus just repeated uh, with queen to e7 he thought okay maybe Wesley's just playing uh, you know moves with the king so we can just draw this very quickly but now Wesley says queen h3 he attacks the f pawn Magnus says all right I'm just gonna defend it and now we have king to e1 so what do you play here? Magnus goes g6. Now he wants to open up the g file. We have h captures on g6 and now rook captures on g6. But now uh, if you look at the position, the position is now completely lost for Magnus and for one very specific reason. So feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Wesley uh, with this, uh, well, sort of a simple idea, but a most powerful one while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing the king and pawn endgame is winning. If you realize that, then the move is uh, automatic. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to h5. This pins the rook. Uh, the, the rook cannot move, otherwise you lose the queen. And uh, if you know that this uh, king and pawn endgame is winning, uh, then you found queen to h5, uh, which uh, makes it all the more important for you uh, to study king and pawn endgames. Uh, so here, Magnus played rook to f6, but we're just going to show... Uh, if you play as uh, something uh, else uh, that white can just trade, just uh, trade everything off, captures, 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 and captures, and now the end game is completely winning. King f2, white has the central pass pawn, and that's uh, all, all white needs. Uh, black does have a, an outside pass pawn, but here it's not going to do him all that much, because if you push it, white will just gobble it up. You, you're going to have to uh, either take care of this pawn, or if you guard this pawn, then you will allow this pawn to march forward. So here black can simply just wait for white to bring his king, in king to h4 uh, and then uh, let's say h5 but now you start advancing the pawn and now the king has to go after this pawn you're going to capture this pawn he's going to capture this pawn now king g5 and you're losing this pawn of course the king cannot uh, keep on defending it these squares are taken away from him king f7 captures now you're up a pawn soon you'll be up many pawns and then it's a very very easy win uh, so instead after this rook captures on g6 uh, queen to h5 magnus played rook to f6 he decided to keep the 
pair of rooks on the board to try and defend this, but Wesley just played queen captures, rook captures, and king to f2. Uh, we have rook to e7 by Magnus, now king to g3, and it was again in this position on move 46 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Like we said, rook g7 is nothing, because if the... Uh, if the rooks get off the board, the king and pawn endgame is winning for white. Uh, and if you don't do this, let's say you try something like king g6, you can activate your king, but then just king h4 with check, king f7, you're going to attack the pawn, rook e6, only way to defend the pawn, and now rook to g1, white simply wastes a move, and now after black makes any move, you're going to play rook to g6, because uh, either the rook or the king will have to leave the defense of the g6 square, so let's say king f8, we play rook g6, and we win. Uh, we said that if the rooks get traded off, the position is winning for white, so you'd have to move the rook, then this falls, and then uh, very soon this will fall, uh, this pawn will fall, and that's it. So, uh, completely unplayable for Magnus, so after king to g3, he resigned the game, and uh, a brilliant bounce back for Wesley uh, in round two of this uh, quarterfinal match against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, Nigel Holloway, Happy Birthday Gavin, Leander Moderson, and Happy Birthday CCP for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing with uh, most likely a game from the other match, as there's been a really interesting one uh, in a match I will not mention now, uh, but in the uh, probably next video. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, probably we're going to do that. Uh, so yeah, once again, thank you for watching and uh, I will see you soon.